The French also lost one of their greatest flying heroes in September when George Guinemere fell. The first nine months of 1917 had been a busy period for Guinemere. At the beginning of the year, he traveled to the Spad plant near Paris to work with the engineers on the installation of a 37 millimeter cannon designed to fire through the hub of the propeller. The weapon did work, but due to its slow rate of fire would not be adopted by the service. The average pilot simply lacked the skills to maneuver into the close firing position required to score with the weapon. In George Guinemere's hands, the cannon proved reasonably effective and he kept the Spad with this armament as a backup machine. Springtime had been particularly fruitful. Guinemere flew his Spad relentlessly and by the end of May, France's ace of aces stood with a score of 43 victories. Captain Brocard, leader of the famous Storks group, wanted Guinemere to retire from frontline flying or at the very least take an extended leave from combat. Never in the best of health to begin with, the young ace seemed physically to be on the decline. He'd grown even thinner, with his dark eyes sunken deep in their sockets. As fatigue had set in, Guinemere had grown more nervous and irritable on the ground. To those around him, it was obvious that Guinemere couldn't continue much longer at the pace he set for himself. On the last day of August, Guinemere reigned victorious over his 53rd opponent, a DFW which fell in flames over Poperingi. The following day he was notified that effective immediately he was to assume command of Escadrille Spad No. 3. As a squadron leader, it was reasoned, Guinemere would have less time to fly. Guinemere hated his new job. Despite his wishes, he had been effectively removed from combat, and as the paperwork piled up on his desk, his favorite Spad sat unused outside his office. By September 11th, it was all too much for the 23-year-old hero who climbed into the cockpit of his fighter at 8.25 a.m. and headed out towards the front. Guinemere never returned from this flight, and as the anxious hours turned into days, and then the days turned into weeks, France mourned the loss of their most beloved flyer. To this day, there is no schoolchild in France who doesn't know the legend of George Guinemere, who, they say, flew so high that the angels wouldn't let him return to Earth. Escadrille Spad No. 103 of the Storks Group had received a replacement pilot in May who would go on to be both the highest scoring Allied pilot and the most successful flyer to survive the war. René Paul Fonck, born in 1894, was a trained engineer who'd taken up flying as a sport shortly before the outbreak of the Great War. Fonck spent the first year of the conflict engaged in bridge building, trench digging, and road repairing. The following year found him aloft over the front in Voison two-seaters, first as an observer and then finally as a pilot. Once he reached the Storks and their spads, Fonk immediately made his presence felt by the enemy. Within 12 days, he had become France's newest ace, having scored the requisite five kills to qualify. Fonk may well have been the best shot of the war. His marksmanship was remarkable. He never wasted ammunition, and many of the 75 kills he would eventually score were brought down with only a few bullets. As his victory score climbed through the remainder of 1917, so did his fame. But even after he'd surpassed the record of the great George Guinemere, he never received the worship or respect Guinemere had. The problem stemmed from René Fonck's inflated ego. Simply put, he was full of himself. Arrogant and boastful with the press and fellow flyers alike, people generally found him to be an intolerable braggart. Fonck would never receive the public adoration he sought even after his uniform stood bedecked with every medal his nation offered. 